Welcome back to the shop, my YouTube friends. Uh, here's the emergency switch. Just came in from Automation Direct uh, that we're going to use on the Martin lathe. And I just wanted to kind of demonstrate to you how these are put together before we stuck this thing in place. So this is an illuminated switch. So there'll be one set of contacts for the illumination. And it is marked as such, right? And this is marked uh, 30 volts. One watt max. Um, this is a it's a 24 volt DC illumination. So if you illuminate it, you get a little voltage. There you go. It's illuminated. And then it comes with what's typical of a uh, emergency stop switch. One set of normally closed contacts. Notice it's red colored here. And then I have two other sets of contacts here. This blue one is a normally open set of contacts, and this red one is another normally closed set of contacts. And uh, this is a uh, switch made by Fuji Electric. Um, it's a quality switch. Uh, it's not a you know Allen Bradley 800, but it doesn't cost like an Allen Bradley 800 either. Uh, and uh, but it is a 30 millimeter size, fits the panel. Uh, came with this nice, or well, you could also buy this nice. Uh, emergency stop uh, piece for the switch that is nicely made, made out of aluminum. Um, and then it comes with this little wrench to take the knob off as to how you, you know, get this thing through the panel. So this is a little wrench for that. But uh, right now what we're going to talk about is the uh, contacts. So these contacts are modular. Um, it comes with a uh, uh, touch safeguard right to uh, have on here and what I need for this particular uh, configuration is I need two sets of normally closed contacts not one so uh, and you can do this in any order you want but so what I need to do is I need to mount another set of normally closed contacts on here in order to do that I need to take this little guard off which just pry this back a little bit fingers and the guard pops out and then the normally closed contacts see here the, here's the actuator very similar to a lot of uh, commercial uh, actuators push buttons and then this just clips on right so push that in push that in there you go now you have two sets of normally closed contacts and then uh, you can pop the guard back in There you go, guards back in place. Uh, and then I'm gonna click this other uh, normally open contact here on top of the blocks that are for illuminating the contact. I mean, for illuminating the uh, light here in the switch. That doesn't actually switch anything, it's just for illumination. But I can pop this on right here and pop this guard back in. Go. One, two, there you go. All right, so now you have a normally closed, two normally closed contacts and a normally open contact. I believe these switches are rated for a maximum of eight contacts uh, that you could stack on here, four and four. Um, obviously, it'd be a pretty large stack. Uh, you'd have to have a lot of depth behind your panel. I don't have depth for that, and I don't need it. But um, anyway, that's how this works. Uh, that's how a lot of modern uh, actuators, push buttons work in a modular manner, just like this. Uh, you can actually buy just this, just the actuator, the button itself. Then you can buy the con the uh, all the contacts loose. They have different styles of contacts. They have normally open, normally closed. They have sustained contacts that are push-on, push-off. Um, they have uh, all sorts of different contactors that you can stack in here to uh, serve whatever your various purposes are. Uh, now we're going to look at how this thing comes apart for you to get it through the panel. So you take the little supplied wrench, pop this little insert off here, and then this just comes on out. 
You can see the LED down in here that um, provides illumination. And um, then here's the, uh, the ring, the uh, capture ring, the threaded piece, that nice metal piece there. And then it comes with this huge stack of washers, uh, spacers, whatever, to use as you see fit. And um, so now what we're going to do is um, go take this over and get it mounted up in the lathe. Before we get started, I want to discuss some changes to the schematic based on the comments of several astute and knowledgeable viewers, for which I am always thankful. One of the or several viewers actually emailed me or personally messaged me or commented that um, I had uh, a schematic that favored the on button, that if the on button was depressed, the coil was going to fire and the motor was going to actuate no matter what you did with the off button. And they were right. As you'll see here, if you press and hold the on button, the motor is going to fire regardless of what you do with the off button. So with a simple change, we can fix this by reversing the position of the wires coming off of the normally closed off switch uh, to, the, to the relay, to the octal relay. Then what happens is the normally closed off switch has to be in the closed position for the relay to actuate. So now with this change, there is only one link between control voltage and the coil on the octal relay. And that's on the back side of the normally closed off switch. So any actuation of the normally closed switch will result in the loss of voltage to the coil and the opening of the relay. So this is definitely a safer way to do it. And I want to thank my viewers that took the time to point that out. I've said it many times and I'll continue to say it. I feel like I get more from my viewers than my viewers get from me and I thank you sincerely. All right, here we are. We're wired up. We've added the e-stop switch in place. Um, as you can see here, uh, the e-stop switch is wired up such that when uh, control voltage is available, it is lit. When the e-stop is activated, it is not illuminated. So we are hot. The on switch uh, is now wired properly with the off switch. So if you press the off switch down and hit the on switch nothing will happen right so this setup favors the off switch but without that there we go and then we can test our uh, emergency stop functionality So there we go. So this is what our schematic looks like now with the e-stop switch in place. I have left out the wires for the illumination circuit for clarity only. So now 24 volts is delivered to the e-stop switch, which sends power to the normally open on switch and to the inbound side of the octal relay. Assuming the e-stop is energized, when you press the start button, the circuit energizes as normal. The octal relay fires off, 
and the contactor closes and powers up the motor. You can press the off button or the e-stop button at this point in time and it will return you to your at rest state. So we're pretty much good to go. All right, YouTube, there you go. Another one in the books. We continue to work on the Martin lathe. Um, making some good progress. So I got the electrical to a point where I'm comfortable using it. Uh, we're going to try the aluminum gear next. Got to uh, get a key in that and it's ready to go. Uh, anyway, keep on chugging along. A um, couple of announcements. Um, the, the Several announcements actually. The bash is coming. I announced this in my last video. So, um, the uh, hashtag meet your maker so June the 20th this year is going to be the bash so make your plans now second announcement uh, Clark Easterling Wendy Hill Foundry my fellow Mississippian over in Morton Mississippi recently cast some patterns for me and if you want to see what they are you're gonna to gotta to watch the video I'm gonna put a link down below maybe one of those little fancy things up in the corner to Clark's video so you can see the patterns that he cast for me also um, being a proud papa my son was recently in selected to be in a video where the city of Vicksburg is applying for the uh, hometown takeover contest um, I will provide links down below to the video, the news article, and to the hometown takeover contest um, that's being put on, I believe it's HGTV or Home Channel, something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, all exciting. And uh, we've got a little teaser here for an upcoming video. Uh, recently, my buddies at Shars Tool sent me this new Char's indicator arm or to test. So we're going to have a video coming up on that where we're going to compare this Char's product to the vulnerable Noka and see how she stacks up. Um, you know, we'll we'll do the uh, we'll we'll try to fabricate some challenges and and uh, see how this thing goes. Maybe strap the inner wrapper to it and. Uh, check it out so look forward to that and um anyway be safe in the shop i'll be back with you soon